We were back at the tree felling this morning. We felled some uh, trees along where the electric wires are going to go. So we need to keep a 10 foot uh, clearance on each side. And then in the afternoon, I did another quick thing. This grade here is the subgrade level, which is a one foot below the top grade. And this is where I continued to put the fiber optic and electric line caution tape. So now it's all laid out where the electric line and fiber lines are underneath. And now all this area is going to get covered with topsoil. So from the wall to around here, about 25 feet off the wall. And then with that, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of dirt on top of the tape so the wind doesn't blow it away. And with that, we are ready for the contractor to come back and uh, put the topsoil down here. Today is a very exciting day because our contractor is coming back and we're going to finish a portion of a project. And it is this grading for the portion that is by the wall. Last time you saw uh, he graded uh, this whole area and finally it looks like what we envisioned. And now he's going to move uh, the topsoil from the big pile over there uh, and spread it out here. We can't build anything in that area, but we can set a sawmill there, we can have lumber piles there, we'll ha we can have solar kiln there because it's movable. And uh, we will also, now that the topsoil is going to be there, we also can start planting some trees. Our vision here is that, so the neighboring property is a large property and the house is nowhere near like this side here, but who knows how it might change in you know, 40, 50 years. So we will plant trees along the wall and that's going to be our uh, privacy screen. And originally we thought we would plant kind of evergreen trees, but we thought we might as well use the space and start planting some uh, apple trees and cherry trees and kind of fruit trees um, and start having fruit earlier because our future garden is still covered with uh, trees, so that will take a while. So here's the driveway coming in, and this area is mostly flat, and then it kind of goes up uphill to the kind of second layer, and then that's our well and our um, electric board, and then we'll be able to put RV up there. So I'm very excited to be able to finally have flat space where we can set up a sawmill and start milling all the wood. Today, for the first time in over six months, we are hooking up the truck to the RV to take it for a drive. But this is possibly one of the shortest drives we've ever done with the RV. It is, however, one of the most exciting because we are taking it up our driveway up to the new house site. It's only about a thousand feet, but it is a fairly steep driveway and this will be the first time that we have towed the RV up there. And while everything isn't complete up there, there are some reasons we do want to get up there. First, we have the well operational. So this way we can fill the RV directly from the well rather than having to haul water back and forth with a water bladder. Second, although we don't have electricity yet, we are pretty much just waiting on the electric company at this point to power us up, to install the lines and power us up. All of our work is done and we're hoping that's going to be in the next couple of weeks. So by having the RV up there, we should be 
ready for the power as soon as it gets turned on. And third, it's a lot more private up there. We're gonna be tucked away back from the road down here, and that means we can just enjoy the peace and quiet up there a little bit more. Plus, when we do have to run our generator, it won't be disturbing any neighbors around us. So, time to get hooked up and take it up the driveway. It's been so long since we hooked up the trailer, we've almost forgotten what to do. We, uh, we had a checklist that we used to use on the road so that whenever we were traveling, each time we hooked up the trailer, it gave us a whole list of things to do inside to make sure everything was put away. Now, because we're only moving a short distance, we're not worrying about some of the things in there that we would normally do. That's for longer travel. But on the outside, we didn't really have a checklist. Instead, we just used to walk around and make sure everything was where it should be. So we have to pay extra special attention today to make sure we don't miss anything. <laughs> In many ways, having the trailer parked in one place for a while is actually, it puts more wear and, and things on the trailer than towing it around. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but when we were moving the trailer every week or two, it was a literal chance to blow off the cobwebs. We'd get everything cleaned down, and then you're driving on the road, any kind of leaves or pine needles or cobwebs that build up get blown off. Being here for six and a half months, non-stop, we've really noticed the cobwebs and the pine needles have started to accumulate. What we really need to do is give it a good like pressure wash down, but we don't have unlimited water here. So that's been difficult to do. We've tried to do what we can um, just with a, a battery powered pressure washer or pressure cleaner and, uh, and some water, but it's hard. So when we get up to the top, there's a ton of things we want to do in terms of maintenance. We want to lubricate a load of things. There's a load of areas we want to touch up with some paint, make sure all our seals are good, reseal windows, get some diker on the roof, make sure it's all good before the winter because we do use this trailer year round and therefore it does get a lot of hard, hard life. For now though, we're gonna do a walk around on the trailer and make sure we're good for this long thousand foot journey up the driveway. This is what we do every time we travel. It has been a while since I did this. So let's see if I can remember. Okay, the hitch is in, the pin is through and latched. The copper is down, the pin is through and locked. Both safety chains are on, the emergency brake is on. Both electrical wires are on and I've confirmed in the truck all the lights and things are good as well. We have both bars on, both L brackets are on, propane I'm leaving on for this short journey but normally we would turn that off. Okay, door is closed, not locked for a short, short journey, stabilise up, windows closed, sliders in, nothing under the wheels here, all the tyre pressure seem good as well. Valves are closed and um, cap is on, stabilisers is up. Bikes are not here this time, but that's okay because they're up in the shipping container. We have both spare tires. We got the camera, although it's not plugged in at the moment. Stabilizers up, awning is in, door is closed, not locked. Again, for a short journey, that's fine. Handles across, steps are up. Tire pressure's again are good, nothing under the wheels. Window is closed, vent is open, but again, normally we'd close that. Window is closed, stabilizers up, door is closed, unlocked, but that's fine. Bar is across and the L bracket is in, as I confirmed before. So I think we're good to hit the proverbial road. Well, we made it up here. We have the RV in its new camping spot. It was definitely steep coming up the driveway. Yeah. Um, I did it in four wheel drive just because the surface is still loose. It's still the sub base on there, not the final driveway surface. This top section here is particularly uneven. You can see over here. And, uh, and so for that bit, I actually put it into four wheel low, not necessarily because the truck needed it, just more I want to take it real steady and uh do you think you'll be able to make it up here in winter i mean it wouldn't be a lot of fun yeah i mean 
I think so. I think it would make it, we'd have to chain up, I think, but based on how it did in the snow on the bottom of the driveway last year, I think we'd make it, but it's not something I would enjoy. Uh, and we'd certainly have to plan pretty carefully for, but none of those worries today. It is a nice warm September day today. And, uh, and yeah, we have the RV in the new camping spot. We are, if I look over here, so you can see we are now, we've got our electrical backboard nice and close to the hookups and the well over here is also just uh, just nice and close to where that's gonna be. We are leaving a nice big entrance way through here because that there is, am I pointing at it? Yeah, somewhere over there. That is where the transformer is going to go when the electric company comes in the next couple of weeks to install it. So we want to make sure there's plenty of space for them to get in there. I don't think the RV is gonna be an issue where it is for them, uh, but if it is, we'll just have to move it. But uh, for now, it feels good to be up here and uh, set back away from the, the road. Time to get set up here. And uh, I need to run down to the bottom and, and get the solar panels, get some more, more juice in the batteries today. Hopefully up here we'll also have a lot better solar. I don't know if you can see, but the, the solar exposure here is a lot better. That's kind of due south over there, uh, somewhere that way. And, uh, and so we actually should have a lot better solar up here than we did down at the bottom where we had shade from some trees. So we are looking forward to that, but Hopefully the solar will only be an issue for the next couple of weeks and then we'll have power. So I'm going to go get the solar panels. The planters that we uh, we put down there earlier on this year, I'm also going to bring those up using the tractor. So hopefully they have uh, retained enough strength to survive the journey up and I can do it without dropping them. That would uh, make Diana very upset if I dropped those. So I'm going to head back down and uh, get the rest of our things. Well, here we are. We have made it to basically our new camping site. We are now up in the area where the, the house site's gonna be built, this means we're right in the action. We are gonna to have to move the RV again when they uh, come to do some, some more grading and some fill up here, but there's a lot of perks to being up here and moving the trailer is a price worth paying. Let me just show you this. So this is the view looking down from where we are now uh, situated. So you can see we've got the sawmill set up down here, but over in the distance, you might just be able to make out that ridge line of mountains there. And uh, it just gives you a glimpse of what we're hoping we're gonna see from the house site. The house site itself being just a little bit higher up than we are standing here. So that's it for, for now. We, uh, we've got the RV up here and uh, looking forward to getting settled in. The reason we are ready for electric is because we spent the last week felling um, the remaining trees that were in the path of the electric line. It was just the usual of felling and uh, chipping the treetops, so we didn't really fell much because you have seen plenty of that on this channel. We just uh, need to clean up the logs that we left behind. So now we're ready for the electric company to come and put in the wires.